Hello everybody, this is Haley with the Lowell Public Library and today we are going to be talking about our next installment in our monthly board gaming program series. This program is where we discuss a board game, we talk about what kind of game it is, how to play it, and some other things that may come up. Alright, and so this month we are going to be talking about one of my favorite deck builder games, and that is Dominion. So Dominion was published by Real Grand Games and plays from two to four players, but you can add additional cards into it and have a extra couple of players into it. So roughly about six people can play this game at once, depending on how many cards that you add into it. The setup time takes about five to ten minutes, depending on what cards you're using, and playtime is about 30 minutes. So first let's talk about what comes inside the box itself. Let's go ahead and open her up. Alright, so the first thing you'll notice is that it comes with its rule book, which looks like that. It's a pretty hearty rule book. Gives you lots of information about the game, how to play it, and a few different ways to set up the game, which we'll be discussing later. And then it comes like this. So it has in the middle here, I don't know if you guys will be able to see that, but it tells you what cards and what kind of value. The best part about this game is you can play this game in a variety of different ways depending on what your setup you want to use is, um, which we'll get into a little bit in a moment. And then we also have the dividers that separate the cards out. Now one thing you will notice is that this correlates with whatever spot it is. So it's very easy to pull cards out of to make setup a whole lot easier. Alright, so like I was talking about, for setup of this game, what you're going to do is you're going to go into the rule book, and when you flip to the back here, it says recommendations for a set of 10. And what you're going to do is figure out, as you're starting out, which one you want to use. So for our first game, we're going to go ahead and use the first game type to figure out what cards we're going to need to set up the game. So we're just going to go through, pull out the seller, market, militia, mine, moat, remodel, smithy, village, woodcutter, and woodshop cards, as well as pulling out the money cards and a few other things. So one moment and we will be right back. Alright, so now that I have all the cards out, I'm going to go ahead and organize them a little bit better. Now, how I like to organize my cards is by the number value of the card and how much cost it has. That can be found here at the bottom of each card, and whatever number it says is how much the card is going to cost as the game goes. I like starting at the bottom, doing the three and twos, and then up to, I believe, six is the highest. So we're going to go ahead and put those in order real quick. Alright, so now that we have everything set up, what we're going to go ahead and do is talk about the different types of cards that there are, since the basic set has a lot of the things that you'll be using as you're getting used to playing. Now the first thing you'll notice are these gold cards down at the bottom. These ones are your money. Now as you play the game, you will not spend your money, but you will use it. So what you'll have is you'll have copper, silver, and gold. Each one of them have different values as you can see on the front of the card. This is worth one, two, and three. Super simple, super easy. And then over here you'll have your point cards. These are your cards that you'll use to gain points as the game goes. So these, at the beginning of the game, will mean nothing. They're just extra cards in your deck. For those of you who have never played a deck builder before, this might be kind of confusing because points are points no matter when you gain them. But you want to have a strong foundation when you're first starting out the game and point cards aren't that valuable if they're just clogging up your hand. So this is a nice end strategy when you're playing the game is to go for a lot of victory cards. Then you'll have cards like this that are two different types. So this card over here is called the moat. And what each card will have is what the card does when it is played. It'll also have the value of how much that it is costing you, 
It'll also tell you a little bit about what the card is. Now, for each turn, you can do one action card, and then you can buy something. So, for this one, having an action and a reaction is a good card, because what this card means is that you can take an action, as well as have it be able to do something if it's in your hand. Then you'll have cards like the seller, which just tell you that you could take an extra action. And this is good if you have a lot of strategy of like building cards on top of each other. That's what a lot of this game is. And then you have cards like this, which have a plus buy, which means you could buy two items instead of just one. And it'll also give you currency for that turn. So you'll have two coins on top of that as well. Then there are cards that benefit you against your fellow teammates. Cards like Militia. As you can see down here, it says Attack. So these are cards that do something against your other player. For this example, Militia, it says each other player discards down to three cards in their hand. When you only start the turn with your turn with five cards in your hand, that can mean the difference between being able to buy I don't know, a duchy or a providence. So getting three extra points and you can take that away very easily from your teammates. So now that you got kind of a little bit of an idea of how things go, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to start the game itself. Alright, so when you're starting out the game, each player is going to start out with three estate cards. So everybody's going to have at least three victory points as long as they don't trash these cards. You're also going to get seven copper pieces. What you're going to do is you're going to take all of these cards, turn them upside down, and you're going to shuffle them together. It's very hard on your first couple of turns to get used to shuffling only ten cards. Um, but you'll gain cards very, very quickly. Again, this is not a very hard game. Um, it's kind of fast paced. It's a good talking game. All right, so then once you guys have those shuffled, what you're gonna do is you're gonna draw five cards and put these ones as your draw pile. So let's go ahead and flip these guys over. So what I like to do is organize my hand. So for my first turn, I have three coppers to spend. Again, those two estate cards aren't worth very much right now, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put them in my discard pile. This does not get rid of them at all. All it does is free up my hand so that way I know exactly what I have to spend. Now, nothing goes into your discard until it's your turn. Because let's say that somebody on their turn had this in their hand and they played it. I could easily discard my two estates and still have my three coppers in my hand. Again, it discards, it does not trash them. Those are two totally different terms in this game. And it's something that you need to remember, especially because it's a deck builder. So what you'll do with your three coppers, let's say it was my turn, I would go through and decide what kind of card do I want to buy. Now with this, I could buy a silver, which is a good strategy for the beginning of the game. Getting a lot of high influence money will make things like buying a market a lot cheaper, especially when you have five, six dollar, uh, eight dollar card items. So what you'll do is you'll go ahead, you'll take your three, and let's say I did want to buy that silver. I would go ahead, take it, I would put all of my cards with my two estate cards into my discard pile. And then I would draw up to five for my next turn. Now you draw as soon as your turn is over, so you'll go ahead and start your turn. This next turn, I will have four. Now, let's say it comes back to my turn, and let's say I buy, I don't know, a smithy. Then once I have no more cards in my draw pile, I will go ahead, take my discard pile, and mix it all together. Now you'll notice I just went from 10 cards to 12 cards. Again, for those of you who don't know what a, de a deck builder is, this is something that you'll learn very quickly with this game you're going to be doing a lot of shuffling. Alright, and then you'll draw up to five again. So let's see what I've got this time. Ooh, okay. 
So I got my Smithy card. So I look at what does this card allow me to do? What kind of card is it first? It's an action card and it allows plus three cards. So that means on my turn, if I play this card, I get to draw three more cards from my pile. So I got an estate card, which isn't worth anything for this turn, but I did get five of my copper cards. So that means that instead of having just the four that I had, I now have two extras, totaling me out to having six. So with this, I can buy anything on the board except for providences. So you'll see how building your cards up makes things worth more. But again, I have that six. I could easily pick up a gold, and again, nothing has gotten rid of. But you'll see the problem here. When I go to draw up my five, I now only have four cards in my pile. So I have to automatically come over here and shuffle my discard pile. And draw one. But the positive, my gold came up. This means that when I shuffled, I put that card and had that card on top, which means that I can use it instantaneously. And now, I have this much money instead of just the three that I had before. So you guys can kind of get an idea of how fast this game goes, especially if you're only playing with a couple people. Now, let's talk end game. So how the game ends is if three of your piles over here are gone, so let's say that these three were gone, that would cause end game to happen. Or, these could be, still be out here, and your providence pile, so your six point cards, are all gone. As soon as that happens, the game ends. And then what you'll do is everybody will go through their deck, taking out any green cards that they have, and totaling up the points. Now obviously you will have much more than just the original three points. Again, this game is about balancing buying cards out here and buying point cards. My favorite strategy is to go through and as you're playing the game, you're talking, you're hanging out, you're having fun. Pay attention when people start buying these kind of cards, when they start buying the victory points. Because that's when you know that somebody's got a strategy to end the game because they think that they have the most amount of points. Now, don't assume that just because you know, oh, I have, th I have, let's say, I don't know, two six-point cards. So I have two of the providences in my deck, and I know that I have 12 points. Do not assume that somebody doesn't have 12 of these. Again, these are very easy cards to buy, especially once you start getting a little bit more. They're only worth one, but somebody could have potentially 13 of them. Or they could have, you know, three of these, and four of those, and one of those. Well, they've just outpointed you in more cards, and their hands may not have been as good, but they still got more points than you. Again, this game is all about balancing between what your action cards are doing and your value of your victory points. That's one of the reasons that I love this game so much, is because it is strategy, but it's a game that you can build your strategy on. You can kind of play it as you go. And again, there's so many options with different variants. Um, Dominion is just the base game. Um, they have a lot of expansions for this game and a lot of different things that they have available for this game. Um, they have a C version, they have a land version, they have all different kinds of versions that make this game buildable, exciting, changing, and forever playable for different groups, different ages. Um, there are curse cards, there are witches, there are a little bit of everything, and I really, really enjoy this game. And I hope you do too, if you get the chance to play. So, that is our program for today, and I hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys next time with our next painting program. Bye!